if if there were a group of guys that were my kind of guys in the NFL at quarterback, Andrew Luck, Carson Wentz, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, Sam Darnold, they're my kind of guys. No bragging when they win. Shake off failure. And failure, Peyton Manning, Brett Favre, Drew Brees, failure is everywhere in this league. You're going to win games. Mark Sanchez won. Tebow won. You're going to win games. How do you deal with failure? I've never said that Sam Darnold had a great arm. It's good enough. I've never said he has the innate skills of Andrew Luck, the size and the talent of Cam Newton. I've also said he's a little reckless. He plays a little fast and loose. So it was absolutely perfect that he threw a pick six to start his career. It was perfect because then it allowed you to see the Sam Darnold I know. From that point forward, he had a quarterback rating of 141. Here's a kid, youngest quarterback to ever start week one in the NFL. On the road, Monday night football against a former number one pick, Matt Stafford, and a coach, Matt Patricia, who's helped guide along with Belichick and Brady those Patriots to win after win after win. There was a lot to be nervous about. And after Sam Darnold threw that pick, he was 16 of 20, two touchdowns, no picks, and a passer rating at 141. And that is the Sam Darnold I saw four years ago at a USC practice, and I came out the very next day on the air, and I said, folks, we got another Andrew Luck. I just saw him for the first time. He's 18. And I sat there with the time Steve Sarkeesian was USC's coach. And I walked over to Steve Sarkeesian. It was the first practice. And I said, that kid is. And and, and Sark looked at me and went, don't say it. I know what you're thinking. And I said, he looks like him, plays like him. He's big like him. He's thick like him. And Andrew Luck, by the way, doesn't have the world's greatest arms. And Andrew Luck, by the way, throws pick sixes. And is going to throw more. Sam's going to throw more of those. Brett Favre had 29 interceptions in what, his 15th year? Remember Brett Favre's last memorable pass threw across his body? Picked off. Ruined the Vikings' chance to get to a Super Bowl. After the game last night, Darren Lee, quote, dude smooth under pressure, doesn't get rattled. We weren't worried whatsoever. He needed to throw that pick six. And it was all his fault, by the way. It was nobody else's fault. It was 100% Sam Darnold's fault. And I've seen him do that at USC, and I saw him do it last night, and you're going to see him do it again. And I saw Favre do it in his 18th year, and Andrew Luck, he'll be doing it the rest of his career. But there's instincts, and you can't coach them, and there's something called maturity and leadership and dude qualities. Sam Darnold is a dude. We've all had guys like this in our life. When the fit hits the shan, who do you turn to? You're getting a divorce. You got to move. Your life stinks for 48 hours. Who's the dude you turn to? That's what Sam Darnold is. That's what the great ones are. That pick six wasn't a problem. It's the first of many. I predicted to have 18 interceptions this year. But the pick six last night provided me the opportunity to let you see what I've been talking about. There's no reason to compare him to Baker Mayfield. I think Cleveland took the wrong guy. I think the Giants in New York made a tragic mistake. They were afraid of the pushback if they drafted Sam Darnold. And because of that, for the next 15 years, Giants fans are going to watch the best quarterback in New York on somebody else's team. It's not about arm. Tom Brady doesn't have a great arm. Joe Montana doesn't have a great arm. It's not about mobility. Peyton Manning ran like a batting cage. It's about dude qualities. Are you a dude? Will other alphas, rich guys, follow you over a hill? You watched Darnold on the sidelines last night? Do you watch him? Like just high five and slap and talking. Watch the Lions sideline? Like nobody talked. Last night, here's what I want. I don't want moods. I don't want poses. I don't want nicknames. I don't want bragging. I want humble in victory, strong in defeat. Congratulations to the New York Jets. The next 12 to 15 years, and Chiefs fans are feeling it after the weekend too, you got your dude.
that is a great feeling in the NFL. You got your dude. Now, fix that offensive line. Get a tight end. Draft another running back. But you got your dude. Let me shift to John Gruden. I've been a doubter since day one. I have been a doubter since day one. And let me say, first of all, Oakland, the organization, it'd be tough for Belichick to win there. This is, this is not easy. They actually are being sued by their city. They don't really know where they're going to play next year. Last night, my wife said, is that a baseball stadium they're playing in? And I said, yes. And it's actually not only a bad football stadium, it's the worst baseball stadium. So the Raiders are playing in a baseball stadium, and it's also the worst. They tarp off the upper deck. They've got the poorest owner. You know what? The Raiders stadium right now is the restaurant my wife refuses to go into because the bathrooms are filthy and the floors are dirty. It's hard to win there. But that wasn't good. That wasn't good last night. Second half, no communication. Derek Carr, receivers, Gruden, no communication. Outscored 23-0 second half. And, And by the way, the Rams didn't play any of their top players in preseason. They didn't play any of them. The Rams had the fewest starters taking snaps of any team in the NFL in the preseason. So they needed a first half to warm up on the road, and they did, and then it was, like, embarrassing. And I'm not saying it's easy because outside of linebacker, the Rams are good everywhere. And even at linebacker, it's not like it's a massive liability. They are loaded in the secondary, loaded defensive line, terrific offensive line, superstar at running back, way above average wide receivers and a really good head coach, and a top defensive coordinator. And Jared Goff is really special. So I'm not saying it's easy. The Raiders are a mess, and the Rams are exceptional. I mean, the Rams last year had the coach of the year. They had the offensive player of the year. They had the defensive player of the year. They had the special teams coach of the year. They're good. And the Raiders are a mess. But 10 penalties in the first half. No adjustments. Couldn't score in the second half. Lack of communication. Derek Carr. Called a two timeout two and a half minutes into the game. That wasn't good. I didn't buy the John Gruden hire. I like him as a broadcaster, and I thought he was a fine coach. But I do think his brand has always been better than his accomplishments. But last night, 20 years ago, John Gruden was Sean McVay. Last night, John Gruden was schooled by Sean McVay. He was. That's what it looked like. This league is not about scripted plays. The Chicago Bears on scripted plays looked like they were way better than the Packers. Alex Smith is excellent on scripted plays. Brady's good. Rodgers is good. Breeze is good. When you're off script, And you got to make stuff happen. And you got to adjust. This is a league of adjustments. Rams didn't play anybody in the preseason. None of their stars. So they needed a half to get going. And that second half, man, that's bad. That looked disorganized. And like, you know, we all know good sometimes can be difficult. What's the difference between good, pretty good, really good, but bad? Bad food, bad movie, bad restaurant, bad traffic. You can spot that. Bad coaching, that looked second half. Detroit looked like a poorly coached team. And Oakland in the second half looked like they got completely, absolutely out-schemed, out-communicated, and worked. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.